Hello YouTube. I uh, thought I'd throw together a little video of how I do the carvings, uh, the halftone photographs. Uh, it's really not that difficult of a process once you figure it out. Uh, I had a lot of uh, a lot of trouble figuring it out. What we do, we take a photograph and we'll start out with the original image. That's uh, that's the original, and you figure out how big you want it to be. Uh, I changed that image over to a black and white, but you can bring a color image into it. Uh, as you can see there, I want to go 10 inches wide and 13 inches high. Then you can set a border to go around it. And at this point, I set it back to millimeters because the numbers just seem to make more sense. Uh, see the spacing there is 3 millimeters. The reason it's 3 millimeters is because my bit is 3 millimeters. Uh, if I go any smaller than that and it punches down deep, then it's going to cause a problem uh, with the max size of the holes. I can't go bigger than three millimeter hole because my bit is not bigger than three millimeters. So you have to kind of measure your bit and do a little playing around with it. And whenever you put it on the preview mode here, you'll see there's a lot of dots in it. In this particular picture, there's 7,578 dots. Uh, you can mess around with that stuff just a little bit, but I found that if I go like a max size much bigger than three millimeters, then uh, the next step doesn't work. So it's kind of you got to kind of give it a trade-off of how it's how you want it to look versus uh, uh, how hard you want it to cut. Uh, you can change the angle over here. And I do that occasionally uh, when I was trying to figure out how to work the program. I would change the angle, but I found out that uh, you can change the angle, but you've got to kind of look at how the picture looks. You don't want to get right up on the picture like I am here. It doesn't look right. And there you step back a little bit. It's a little bit better. Uh, once I get the image done the way I want it, then I will come over here to the toolpath and I will write uh, some G-code. Or the, the program will write it. I'm using a 90 degree bit. My safe Z is 0.5 millimeters, which means it's going to travel up 0.5 millimeters above the, the uh, surface uh, to do the, uh, do the uh, when it moves from place to place. And our max speed is uh, 500 millimeters a minute. I can run a little faster than that, but my machine doesn't like it. So you know, it's it's kind of a trade-off. Do you want to do it fast and screw it up and have to do it twice, or do you want to do it slow and, and get it to work pretty good? Uh, some of these other settings down here, the invert, if you're running with a, uh, a white background and you want to make your holes black, you flip that one. Uh, the dark boost, that just brings up 8,800 holes, and I, I cut one like that. I didn't like it. Now, once you get your image written to G-code, I open the G-code up in uh, WordPad. And as you can see here, there's some stuff at the top. These are your headers. Uh, right here is where it actually starts to do the cut. Is right here at uh, line 140. I remove this because I turn my spindle on my hand. I take that one out. I don't use the tool change, so I don't need that one. My machine kind of spits up on some of these codes, so I just get rid of them. And those two. And if you know a little bit of G-code, then you know that's rapid movement. That's uh, sitting at the metric. This is your uh, XY plane. Forget what that one is. And 40 removes all the offsets. Oh, 90 is the, uh, inc or the unit mode, increment mode. Oh. Uh, that's about all I do. I keep the G or the uh, uh, WordPad kind of at hand, just in case I screw up. All right, you can do that in the editor here, but it doesn't like it that well. It takes it a while to, to kind of work through it because of the way that it's scripted, and uh, my computer is not very powerful. This brings up your toolpath whenever you load the uh, load it into the program here. I'm using uh, BCNC. Once you get your toolpath brought up, I like to bring the picture back up beside it. And it gives me sort of an idea where I am in the program. If it stalls out, then I can go in and if you highlight one of these areas, 
See how it lit up that section of code? So if I know that it's stalled out on the eye there, I can click on the eye, it brings up that section of code. I can open it, open that section of code, and see that I'm at line 144,260. So I can go to that line in WordPad, delete everything above that, and start over at that point. So it saves you some time of going back and recutting uh, a bunch of stuff. It took me a little while to figure that part out. All right, once you get your image into the program, you get your toolpath and your G-code set up. Uh, you're pretty happy with the way everything looks. Next, you have to put your piece of uh, material down. And what I'm using is uh, particle board. I'm painting it black. Once I paint it black and cut it to the size that I want, uh, I cover it in blue painter's tape. This is just the two inch wide stuff. I cover it, uh, cover it in that. Once I get it mounted to the machine, you can see here I've got a dial indicator on it. What I do with the dial indicator is go around and hit it in several spots and make sure this kind of uh, kind of level. Whenever you're dealing in fractions of a millimeter here, and I'll show you, uh, I'll bring the half toner back up. It may not know millimeters, but if you know inches. See there, I'm a hundred. Uh, the the difference in the uh, the two size of the holes or spacing and then the size of the holes. Well, that equates to just a very little movement on the G, uh, the Z axis. So you gotta kind of got to kind of got to get it level. If you don't, then you'll end up washed out in some places and you'll end up uh, really dark in others. Now I had that happen a few times before I figured out what I was doing wrong. Once you get to this point. You uh, start the machine up and you let it run. And this image here is going to take uh, three hours to cut. I just come back in and I check on it. Uh, I found out after the first couple of them, you don't keep blowing them off. Uh, you can, I can take a vacuum cleaner and suck the dust off of them, but I don't want to blow them much. It'll lift the tape up. Uh, once you get it all the way you want it, you let it run, you let it cut the image. Uh, once I get done with doing all that, then I'll spray paint over top of it white. And when you spray paint it white and let that dry, this is what you end up with when you pull the painter's tape off. That's pretty awesome, I think. This image is kind of a little bit offset, it looks like. Uh, it looks like it's down a lot lower than it should be. But the, uh, the, the whole thing is actually centered on the black. It's just that it didn't cut a lot of holes in the top of it. There's, you can zoom in there, there's some right in there that it, that it cut. But that's just the way that the image come out. Not all images work with this. I fought with a couple of images for hours trying to get them to where they looked right. It just wouldn't happen. And... Now that, that's pretty much the process. The, the one thing you can't find much of on YouTube is how to set up the uh, half toner. I'm using half toner version uh, 1.4. You don't see a whole lot of videos on, on the settings. And it took a little while to figure it out. And I could be doing it completely wrong. If I am, let me know. Uh, I would much rather do it the right way and have better results. But these, these seem to be working. Uh, like I said, I measured the bit and how big of a hole I wanted. Of course, the smaller the holes, the more holes you're going to have and the longer it's going to take. Uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You just cut it and you... Uh, it's, it's kind of a long, drawn-out process whenever you start, the, start it up, but I think the results are worth it. I really think that that's, that's a slick-looking little image there. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on how I can do it better, please let me know. Uh, I'm out to learn this, make it, uh, try to make it the best I can make it. Thank you for watching, and leave a comment if you uh, if you know how to make it better. Thanks.